Hey, beautiful people of the hospitality industry, Sham here. How to open and run your first successful restaurant. Uh, fall is here, and um, a gentleman that I have lots of respects for, I like to call him the mammoth of the hospitality industry. <laughs> he taught me a lot. You know, really, listen, this is, I'm going to put this as a weather series, but also as a mentor series. You know, the importance of having people oh, of great yeah. influence. And since you asked me to ask you the following questions, here I go. <laughs> Uh, you taught me a lot about one. Everything I know about one actually I learned from you, from the poetry behind it to the actual technical knowledge, conservation. The wine cellar that we actually have at Morocco was a gift from you, mm -hmm. you know, and it's still there. And man, if that wine cellar could talk. Um, so, what is your favorite wine, Mr. Mark Hollis? The wine Hollis, club. And the wine club, yeah, we did yeah. that as well. And wine uh, license, all that. Yeah, 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 yeah. So, tell me, Don't what's lie. your favorite? What's, what's your favorite wine? Well, my favorite wine, I, I, I wouldn't say that I have a favorite wine, Shem. I, I'd have, I do have a favorite wine region, and, um, and the grape, uh, you know, the grapes that are grown there. Uh, my favorite wine region is the Veneto region. Veneto. In, in Italy, yes. Why? And, um, because they make a very special wine uh, called Amarone de della Bella Policella, and it's in the classical region, which is grown on the eastern slopes of Val Policella. And this particular uh, region grows uh, amazing, amazing uh, wine. Uh, there's three different grapes that are uh, noble grapes for the region, which are Rondinella, Molinara, and Corvina. Is it the soil that's so rich that gives this powerful plant? Is it the wine technique method? It's the, it's the technique of winemaking mostly. Um, excuse me. Can anybody be a winemaker? You know, have everybody, there is lots of people, the seven liters of money, they go for the glamour, the open winery. Is it that hard to produce a drinkable wine? And what makes a good drinkable wine from a, a delicious wine? Yes, it is hard to make a really great wine. Um, but without the grape from the soil, you cannot make great wine. You must have the materials. Then you must have the know-how. But so you mentioned some. Sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt. Go ahead. It was, so we we're talking a little bit about Veneto, and Veneto is in the northeast region of uh, Italy. It corresponds to Piedmont, uh, and uh, uh, where the great Barolos are uh, are grown. Uh, Nebbiolo being the noble grape of that particular area. But um, when we speak of Amarone, we are speaking of a grape that is ma made from the. A, an old Greek method called a passamento, and a passamento is a method where uh, the moisture is extracted from the grapes uh, uh, during racking, and uh, they produce a very dry, dry wine. Uh, there's four different demarcations for the area, uh, Bardolino, Valpolicella, Ripasso, and then uh, Valpolicella della Classico, which is Amarone. I'm going I'm to stop you. And you know, there, there was a time where I was so much into this and I would make notes and rehearse. I know you're not, if you, you haven't noticed he's not drinking. Yeah, I stopped drinking about a period of time now for uh, personal reasons, for health reasons. <laughs> you know, I just have stuff to do, man. I mean, whenever I drink, it just, just destroys my productivity. I mean, I have lots of fun, but I've, I think I did, I did enough drinking for couple of lifetimes here and yes. uh, I just have stuff to do sir yes. so uh, go back going back to the disc because I like to keep these videos a little bit sweet and we can shoot another one if mm -hmm. we need to you know you talk about all these terms you know those fancy terms Emerono Papachillo left west side mm -hmm. slope weather oh. I mean this is great but what about the weather out there who wants to go into the waiting industry who is first day never had a job before works at Morocco and boom the manager or the owner is telling them hey here is a wine list how can they go about because this is intimidating. You know, you said about all these words and everything. Gosh, I knew about red well, and white. I started okay, there. Okay, so, so let, me, let me address that a little bit. That, that first of all, it shouldn't be something that intimidates the server. It should be something that inspires him to learn. Um, it also should also uh, fortify his, his uh, esteem of his, of his vocation because it is a professional uh, uh, atmosphere in which he works. Um, he's often, if you're working in a fine restaurant, excuse me, if you're, if you're working in a fine restaurant where uh, it, that caters to uh, business, high power business, for instance, the likelihood that you are serving a world traveler 
who has eaten in very fine restaurants and in very fine hotels, spent lots of money exploring his taste in the in uh, uh, culinary and, and, and wine and, and spirits uh, and such, um, then you are you're talking about being placed in front of somebody who is going to require, you know, some intelligent conversation. And so it shouldn't be something that intimidates the server, but rather inspires him to learn and, and to inspires him. And, and then also kind of should, you know, help him stand up a little straight, a little bit straighter and look himself in the mirror and say, hey, you know what, uh, this is a, you know, I'm proud of what I do. It's I an know honor of what I do. I to talk about this. Mm -hmm. mm. Excellent. So that was uh, that question, how uh, to get rid of intimidation when it comes to the wine business. Another one coming up soon.